In order to combat the swift and devastating German blitzkrieg during the Second World War, the U.S. Army recognized the importance of neutralizing not just individual tanks, but also the Wehrmacht's ability to use them effectively. To do that, an entirely new doctrine of mechanized warfare was developed, the establishment of dedicated tank destroyer forces. American manufacturers responded to the Army's requirements by developing over a dozen models. However, as one need was satisfied, new demands quickly emerged, creating a continuous cycle of evolving requirements. While the M10, utilizing the M4 Sherman chassis, proved to be a dependable combat vehicle against the medium German panzers in North African desert warfare, it did not align with the long-term vision of the leaders of the U.S. tank destroyer force. They sought a solution that emphasized speed, cost-effectiveness, mobility, and firepower. To achieve this, the test models of the T-70 prototype were acquired, which embodied the ideal Panzer Hunter. The result was the M-18 Hellcat, which not only became the fastest armored vehicle of its time, but also stood as one of the most efficient anti-tank weapons of World War II. This second-generation tank destroyer, weighing 20 tons, boasted impressive features, such as a top road speed exceeding 50 miles per hour. Additionally, it was armed with a high-velocity 76mm main gun, equivalent in stopping power, to the M10's 3-inch gun. Armor was soon sacrificed in favor of speed and mobility, and its main turret was subsequently upgraded with the 76mm turret borrowed from the Sherman tank. The M18's combat service began even before its standardization process was completed. During the spring 1943, five newly introduced T-70 models were sent to the Italian campaign. Three of the vehicles were assigned to the reconnaissance company of the 894th Tank Destroyer Battalion, and took part in breakthrough operations at Anzio, towards the end of May. M-18 crews greatly appreciated its speed and agility in reaching firing positions. However, the insufficient killing power of the 76mm gun and the limited protection it provided to the crew, prompted commanders to exercise caution, when considering the complete transition of entire battalions from the M10, to the Hellcat. The M18 Hellcat had a meager 13mm front hull armor, even inferior to the M8 armored car, and well below the 2-inch frontal armor of the M4A1 Sherman, or the 1.5-inch armor plate of the M10. Moreover, the M18's turret suffered from an inconvenient internal arrangement, impeding the reloading of the main gun, and leading to sluggishness in combat scenarios. The arrival of more formidable German tanks like the Panther and Tiger, only exacerbated the challenges faced by the M18 Hellcat. These apprehensions weighed heavily on Lt. Gen. Omar Bradley's staff, as they prepared for Operation Overlord, to such an extent, that the commander of the 1st Army, hesitated to convert tank destroyer battalions under his command to the M18 Hellcat. Out of the 19 tank destroyer battalions assigned for the invasion of France, only three would be equipped with the Hellcat prior to landing in Normandy. These three battalions, the 603rd, 704th, and 705th, were part of Lt. Gen. George S. Patton's 3rd Army, all making their way ashore in Normandy, by late July 1944. During the initial breakout from Normandy in Operation Cobra, the role of the M-18 Hellcat shifted from primarily serving as a tank hunter, to assuming responsibilities in convoy protection and supporting infantry operations. The M-18 Hellcat's encounter with the Panther and Tiger tanks of the Wehrmacht was delayed, partially due to the absence of a significant German Panzer counteroffensive immediately after D-Day. 
This delay in engagement might have been beneficial, as subsequent ordnance tests conducted in the United States revealed flaws that highlighted the inadequate firepower of the M-18. While initial ordnance tests suggested that the 76mm gun had the potential to penetrate the frontal armor of a Tiger tank, at distances of up to 1,800 meters, it is important to note that these tests were severely flawed. In reality, M18 crews quickly learned that engaging heavy German tanks with frontal fire beyond a range of 270 meters had minimal impact. Additionally, the M18 Hellcat offered no protection against the potent high-velocity guns mounted on the Panther and Tiger tanks. Despite being outmatched in firepower, Hellcat crews exhibited remarkable skill in destroying a significant number of enemy tanks and effectively countering German panzer assaults whenever the opportunity arose. Like many other U.S. armored fighting vehicles during the European War, Hellcat crews demonstrated adaptability by developing new tactics that capitalized on the strengths and weaknesses of the vehicle in combat situations. They leveraged the Hellcat speed to swiftly position themselves for flank attacks on German tanks. Furthermore, Hellcat crews discovered that a well-placed shot between the mantlet and glassy plate of a Panther tank could cause the projectile to ricochet into the driver's compartment, killing the crew or disabling the tank. These tactics proved effective when Hitler eventually authorized an armored counteroffensive against Patton's Third Army in September 1944. One notable engagement occurred on September 19, when Company C of the 704th Tank Destroyer Battalion, operating under the 4th Armored Division's Combat Command A, played a crucial role in the defense of Erico. The company provided assistance in repelling the attack launched by units of the 113th Panzer Brigade, successfully knocking out a number of enemy panzers in the process. Taking advantage of the fog for cover, M-18s seized the opportunity to ambush a company of heavily armed and armored Panthers from the 113th, near Bizange La Petite. Skillfully utilizing a slight depression as a firing position, the Hellcats unleashed their firepower, resulting in the destruction of seven Panthers before the break of dawn. This tactical maneuver during the foggy conditions demonstrated the Hellcat's ability to outmaneuver and disable superior enemy tanks. Continuing their offensive, the 113th persisted in their attack, only to encounter the determined resistance of Company C once again. The company successfully thwarted an assault on the command post of the 4th Armored Division, thanks to the courageous leadership of Captain Tom Evans. Taking advantage of their positioning, the lead platoon of Company C deliberately drew the attention of the German tanks, inadvertently diverting their focus from the two other platoons of Hellcats that were stealthily advancing on the enemy's flanks. During the ensuing engagement, the three platoons of Company C engaged in a fierce firefight, successfully eliminating four German tanks before tactically withdrawing. However, as the German Panzers and Panzer Grenadiers began to retreat, Company C seized the opportunity to pursue them. Captain Tom Evans displayed extraordinary bravery by personally manning the gun of a disabled M18 and single-handedly destroying two Panzers, earning the Distinguished Service Cross in the process. Despite the notable achievements of the Hellcat around Erico, units utilizing the vehicles were often assigned to secondary missions. Consequently, the deployment of the M18 Hellcat typically involved company-sized formations integrated within infantry and combined combat elements. The M18 Hellcat, similar to its predecessor, the M10, was primarily utilized as an infantry support weapon, playing a significant role in the elimination of fortified enemy positions and pillboxes in urban areas. 
However, unlike the concentrated massed battalion formations intended for anti-armor operations, the M18 was rarely deployed in such large numbers. Instead, its deployment was more commonly spread out, integrated within infantry units, to effectively fulfill its role in providing infantry support and engaging in urban combat scenarios. Despite its effectiveness in secondary operations, the revised role of the M18 Hellcat came with certain drawbacks. Common complaints included concerns about the open turret configuration and the exposed .50 caliber machine gun. Furthermore, the absence of a coaxial machine gun provided limited protection for the exposed heads of the tank driver and assistant driver, raising additional safety concerns. These factors highlighted some of the vulnerabilities and limitations faced by the M18 in its adapted role, reflecting the trade-offs made to accommodate its new operational requirements. Hellcat crews frequently found themselves in situations where they had to employ their 76mm cannon against enemy infantry targets, leading to the depletion of precious ammunition intended for anti-armor purposes. These circumstances further emphasized the enduring weaknesses of the M18, including its light armor and limited penetration power of the main gun. These flaws served as persistent vulnerabilities, highlighting the inherent contradictions within the tank destroyer doctrine. During the final stages of World War II, the M18 Hellcat had one more opportunity to demonstrate its capabilities against the formidable German panzers. This occurred during the German Ardennes Offensive in December 1944. The M18s of the 705th Tank Destroyer Battalion played a crucial role in the defense of Bastogne. When the 15th Panzer Division launched an attack on the positions held by the 101st Airborne Division on Christmas Day, the 705th and their M18s played a vital part in holding off the German advance. Remarkably, the M18s were credited with destroying 27 German tanks, while only 6 M18s were lost during this engagement, showcasing their effectiveness in combat. The Ardennes battles convinced the army of the need to re-equip its towed tank destroyer battalions, in favor of self-propelled systems like the M18. However, as 1945 arrived, the focus shifted towards re-equipping units with the advanced, M36, featuring a powerful 90mm gun capable of engaging Panthers at extended ranges, compared to the 76mm gun of the M18. Despite the prevalent preference for the M36, several units opted to convert from the M10 to the M18, indicating the continued recognition of the M18's value and effectiveness in combat. In terms of sheer numbers, the M18 can be considered a successful tank destroyer. Renowned units such as the 603rd and 704th Tank Destroyer Battalions boasted impressive records, claiming the destruction of over 90 enemy armored vehicles during their service in Europe. The experiences gained from engagements in Aracourt and Bastogne further emphasized the vital role played by the M18 in neutralizing panzer offensives and defending against enemy attacks. Similar to its counterpart, the M10, the M18 faced challenges stemming from an ill-defined doctrine. Despite being the fastest armored vehicle employed by any side in the war, the M18's main gun often fell short in fulfilling its primary objective of effectively neutralizing German tanks. Battlefield conditions rarely mirrored the anticipated blitzkrieg scenarios that originally shaped tank destroyer doctrine and prompted the development of such vehicles. As a result, the M18 found itself utilized more as a tank, albeit one with limited armor protection. Despite its shortcomings and the challenges it faced, the M18 demonstrated its versatility and adaptability on the battlefield, contributing to the overall success of the US forces in World War II. 
Through the training and resourcefulness of American service members, the M-18 proved its capability to perform a range of tasks, making valuable contributions to the Allied victory.